Hi there, Bob Wormsley with you from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday. And on today's video, we'll look at how we set up this really nice skull animation. And this is actually particle to particle collisions. These are all calculated within the Nexus Constraints system. Um, it's really cool, fast to simulate, and we can get some very nice kind of organic movement of our particles. So let's start. In our scene, we have these particles being emitted from within this cube object. The cube has a display tag on set to wireframe, which is why we're looking at, uh, looking at it like this. And the cube also has an XP collider tag on there with the normals set to inside. All the friction and bounce has been taken off. So the particles are trapped inside our cube. We have got an NX gravity object in this scene, pulling the particles down. That's got a strength of 500, and that is giving us this sim and obviously we're viewing these particles as spheres. Let's go to the emitter main, which is the one we're looking at, and go to the emission tab. We're in rate mode, we're emitting for 80 frames, 100 particles per frame, and we've got a speed of 150, radius of 5, variation of 4, which is giving us this nice variation of radius. Now, we do have one problem here. As we are emitting these particles, um, they're being born, there's so many, they're being born in an intersection state and that is not going to be good when we start activating our collisions so to avoid that we're going to use this no intersection setting so I'm going to click that I'm going to pick a radius that's slightly bigger than our largest particle so let's maybe try a radius of 12 and now this is if there are any intersecting particles it'll just kill them when they're born and so it'll thin that out yeah and we're no longer getting particles born on top of each other and that means when there's collisions active we won't get kind of popping at the emission point here okay so that's looking good what we have is a sim without any particle to particle dynamics though we want these particles to collide and not be able to penetrate so we're going to do that with a nexus tool let's go to nexus and we're going to bring in an nx constraints and we're going to use a collisions layer now if we play this in the default we may see a little bit of collider activity but it's all just kind of collapsing and they're not working particularly well and that's because we don't have enough simulation accuracy with the particles moving this quickly and with this gravitational force so the first thing that you're able to do to increase accuracy um, is to increase your iterations so if we put this up to say 10 we're going to see that we have a slightly more accuracy yeah look we're starting to get some proper particle to particle interactions here but this isn't quite enough because if you see we're still getting a little bit of intersecting going on here so instead of just ramping up this iterations until we get that correct what we're going to do is we're also going to increase the subframe steps we're going to divide each frame into smaller chunks and that is going to make this calculation way more accurate it's advisable if you've got fast moving particles and strong forces like a strong gravity it's always a good idea um, to start increasing subframe steps so let's hit Control d to get to the cinema 4d settings we're going to go to the x particles tab and here's our x particles subframe steps setting let's put this up to three and if we hit play now you're going to see my guess is we're going to have pretty perfect collisions yep look no intersecting going on and that is perfectly solved our particles fantastic all right, we may return to these settings later because we're going to be pumping way more particles into this sim. Uh, but for now, let's just leave it as is. I'm also just going to go to my emitter main uh, emission tab. Let's just reduce this no intersection radius down a little bit, which will give us more particles in the scene. We might get a little bit of bouncing at the top, but that's going to be fine. That's not going to be in the camera view anyway. Let's press play. Yes, you see a little bit of popping, but we can get away with that. We've got slightly more particles in the scene very nice so those those are our collisions working let's just switch off that emitter main now and activate this new emitter called emitter lights if I put that on you can see that this is a circle emitter it has a cinema 4d vibrate tag on with a bit of position change in the X and the Y which means that it is animating around like this 
And what we want to do is we want this to um, have a pulsing blast of particles, smaller particles firing into this sim. So in the emission tab, we have got this set to pulse emission and it will uh, shoot out particles for four frames every 40 frames. So we'll get a pulse every 40 frames. And if we come down, we're starting this pulse on frame 150, just so our tank is nice and full. We're ending at 400, and we've got a lifespan of 50 with a variation of 10 on these particles, and we're birthing 500 particles per frame. Um, and we've got look at this radius, uh, radius of 1 with a variation of 1. So if we have a look at those pulsing particles, on frame 150, we'll get our first pulse, and we'll get a blast of particles coming out here. Here it comes. There's our particles. There's our next one. There's our next one. And there's our next one. So this is how we did the lights element of this cool skull animation. So together, if we then activate our emitter main, we're going to get both of these emitters simulating and the constraints, those collisions will be working on both. And what we get is when we get our pulse of particles, we get this really nice residual movement through the simulation. Look at this movement. It's so cool. Um, it's almost like a fluid sim. And so obviously you can mess around and get different um, kind of emission types for these small ones to add different looks to your scene. But we get this really, really cool look. And if we go to our render elements folder here, go inside this camera, this is what we would see kind of in the render view. And here comes our first pulsing in a bit. Here we go. Yeah, and we get this really cool kind of residual movement of our large particles. So you can see it plays really quickly in the viewport. It's, it's very easy to kind of adjust and art direct. You could put turbulences in here and all sorts. And then at render time, all we had to do was in our emitters, both of them, we have just got some skull geometry, which we are... Um, uh, instancing as custom objects and if we go to our redshift render view let's open that up and hit render you can see that even though we've simulated this on very fast to simulate particles we can then as long as your geometry is sphere ish shape um, you can get away with it and you can instance these skulls and it's going to look cool and you can see look our smaller ones we have got with a glowing material which means that it glows up through our um, render as they kind of blast into the scene. So that is how we did this. It's a really simple setup using the power of Nexus constraints with the collisions options to create this quick particle scene, which we then turned into this nice detailed skull render.